today in the day in the life of an art teacher, I'm gonna share with you what it's like to organize multiple classes all in one space, as well as sometimes even having multiple classes taking place in one single class period. So stay tuned for that. And in addition to that, I'm gonna share some fun ways to get your students engaged and excited about taking classes. Good morning. Um, it is currently 4.30 in the morning and this is the time I usually get up to do a 45 minute workout. Also my dog likes to join me. <laughs> this is a time for me to be alone. The only time in the entire day that I get to myself, no matter if I get two to eight hours of sleep, I'm always getting up at this time because it really allows me to prepare my mental state for the entire day for my family, for my students, for anyone I come in contact. So let's do this. All right, it's seven o'clock and I am heading out of the door. I just made my coffee. So let the day begin, dropping the kids off at daycare and school and then heading to my school. All right, so I'm currently heading into school. I'm definitely that teacher that carries um, half their body weight of things into the classroom. Hello out there, my name is Tasha Newton and I am a sixth grade through 12th grade art teacher in a very rural school district in the state of Wisconsin. And when I say rural, I mean on my way here, which is about a 10 mile drive, I saw probably 20 different cornfields, a barn, a few houses, and if you're really lucky, sometimes you might even get to see a horse and buggy because we live in a very high Amish population. Being the only art teacher, middle school through high school, that means I get to teach a little bit of everything and I get to teach all of that in the exact same space. So make sure you like and subscribe to A Day in the Life of an Art Teacher through the Art of Education University right here so you can see some more fun videos like this. All right, so one of the first things I like to do when I get to school is open the kiln if I had it running overnight. We did a glaze firing last night and we have a bunch of the sixth grade coil pots with the sgraffito technique on top. These were inspired by um, Greek pottery as well as two contemporary artists, Kara Walker and um, Grayson Perry. Underneath here, we have a bunch of pinch pots. So let's go ahead and unload this. So I wanted to share with you a quick tour of my room um, so you can see how it's kind of organized to allow all of those activities to take place in one space. So obviously you have to have some fun signage in your classroom, so don't be a fart. Make sure you're getting to art. This is where I store all my students' works in progress. So there's a, just a little picture of what materials that should be in here. They slide out and literally take out the whole drawer to take with them. All right, over here, I have a little chill space for my students. So if they want to, they can bring their own coffee um, and make their own coffee beverages or tea. Winter in Wisconsin, it gets a little chilly in any space that you're in. So it's a nice way to warm up on those cold, chilly days. I also like to post as much student work in my classroom as possible. So clothespins glued to like literally everything with hot glue is my go-to for how to display all of that student work. On this wall behind me is my little artist wall. All of the pieces on this wall are either artists that have actually come to my classroom and work with my students or actual student artwork. Very intimidating, overwhelming, learning target wall, dum dum dum. Although this looks like a lot of information happening in a very small space, it's a really great way for me to organize where students are at in each unit, in each project, and also what learning targets I want them to really focus on for that day. Hello, so I'm checking in. I just finished with photography and they are doing a macro staged photography unit. Prior to this, we did an exposure triangle unit. So students are staging their pieces on these little trays. So my goal here is that they're using just everyday objects and making them and transforming them into these really fun, playful scenes. This is a really fun unit that was inspired by the photographer, Erin indoors and she is a wildlife photographer that started creating these amazing images um, during COVID. It is Friday and on Fridays and when I used to teach elementary all of my students we loved Disney Fridays and then the kids would get to guess what movies the songs were coming from so my high school students love it as well and for some reason disney has always been like a neutral zone like everyone's okay with it no one's gonna get upset whoever shouts out the movie that song comes from first gets a little treat out of my treat drawer this is a favorite drawer of all my students these are some treats i stole from my children and then sugar-free ones for my friends that cannot have sugar and then i also keep a little tub of snacks here for students so if my students are hungry and that's why they're not getting their work done i'm sorry i'm gonna let them have a little granola bar i'm not gonna let that be an excuse to 
it for students not be successful in school. And also, I put it right by me, so students have to come to me and talk to me in order to get something. <laughs> I currently have my digital art students in my classroom right now. So I've been collecting energy drink cans, and they're just gonna paint the top, and then we're gonna print out those wraps, and they're gonna wrap all the way around. We're using Illustrator on the iPads for this. One of the nice things that I do have in my classroom is a classroom set of iPads. Um, and then with the iPads, we're also using the Logitech crayons and these are really nice styluses. Um, the only thing that's different with from this stylus to an Apple pen, these are not pressure sensitive. So they just fin finished this. Um, this piece was inspired by the artist um, Okuda San Miguel. Um, and they chose an animal and then broke it down into different triangles, which only required them to use a few of the tools in Illustrator, so it was a lot easier for them to grasp. I just wanted to share with you kind of how I lay out units. So I lay them out um, kind of like how we have our standards. We have like connect, make, create, respond, and um, present. And I kind of lay out each unit in that way and each section is kind of connected to that part of the standards. So for example, the connecting for this particular unit would be students um, went and researched different tribes and different pottery te techniques, um, coil techniques from those different tribes. I primarily used the tribal websites. They are, have really wonderful resources. Um, and then they also researched some contemporary artists and then they were doing a compare and contrast to kind of share the differences between those two styles and some similarities. And then they did a final sketch here of what they thought they would do for their final coil pot. And I love this handout from the Art of Ed in one of their coil lessons. All of the steps for this I do flip it and have all the tutorials and everything on Google Classroom for them, but I do demo it in class as well. And this is one of my Ceramics 2 students working on a fountain piece. So this student incorporated um, a throne piece along with some hand building pieces here. And they're working on creating a little fountain that's going to um, hide the pump under here and the water is going to be coming out of here and I think it is for their cat, I believe. Um, they're also going to put some glass on the bottom with these koi fish, so that should look really fun. you can see the glazes are on display. All right, so I wanted to share with you how we recycle clay because we obviously don't have a pug mail. Here we have our bone dry clay. Um, once this bucket is emptied and we've recycled all of this, we put the bone cl dry clay in. And then I like to use the, um, extra buckets that were left over on the wheel of um, water because that also has some clay residue and we can't waste any of that clay, right? And then we can use emulsion blender or we just use this fancy stick and kind of smush it all together. Um, then we bring it up here. This is just a piece of plaster that we lay it out on to dry and we wedge it all and then it's good, brand new, ready to use. All of the recycled clay I like to save for our hand building techniques and then all of our fresh clay out of the boxes is what I prefer for them to use on the wheel. All right, so another thing I wanted to share with you is I also teach an adaptive art class first semester. I have an additional licensing in adaptive art, um, which required three additional special education courses as well as a student teaching experience. Um, and with that additional degree, I'm able to do a little bit more um, in terms of IEPs. I can actually help write IEP goals specifically for art. One of the things I feel like they never teach you is like how to read an IEP. Um, now it's a lot easier for me to read that because I took a course on that. First semester I always teach an adaptive art class and usually it's between four to six students all with varying um, abilities. Students with different abilities struggle to um, get the confidence to actually take an art class because they don't think it's something they're capable of doing. By having this adaptive class I'm able to show students they're capable of doing all the things in the art room and then I have a lot of them actually taking studio courses. This semester I have one of my students with cerebral palsy taking a ceramics and she's working on the wheel and that's one of her favorite things to do but we were able to borrow an adaptive wheel from a, um, a neighboring school district so that is also really special so with my painting students we try to explore three different mediums acrylic um, oil and watercolor and then they created three um, pieces out of each of those three different mediums. Now we're into color theory, which is really fun. So we did some research and we learned about like how we see color, um, how pigments are actually made and why are they different than other things. Um, and then we did this really great pretest from the Art of Ad. So for the acrylic exercise, we did a little palette knife exercises like this inspired by the artist Josie Lewis. These I mixed with um, art paste 
and a little modeling paste to get that texture. And then we did a um, gloss on top of that as well. So then they also had to do a, a similar technique, but with watercolor. But I did have them use this color mixing matrix, which is also from the Art of Edge. And they can demonstrate their understanding of color mixing with watercolor on these, just however they wanted to kind of go through and show that they knew how to mix tints and shades and intermediate and secondary colors. All right, so now they're working on a final project and this is really choice based. All the, the requirements for their final project are is that they had to have a, some kind of color scheme. So it could be monochromatic, it could be complementary, it could be triadic, it could be analogous, whichever they choose. And then they also had to incorporate that palette knife again somehow. Today we kind of did assessment to see how students are doing with color mixing and they mixed up their color and tried to get it as close as they could to that little color swatch. So they did a really rock star job. All right, so it is lunchtime and I am eating lunch with a coworker because we are collaborating on a project. Her students are putting together flower arrangements and my photography students are going to be photogra photographing them for like a product photography project. So we are collaborating on that during lunch and then after that I get to have my prep time. Ah. All right, so we made it to fifth hour. This is my prep period. Um, and on Fridays, they always grade. Um, I do not take off points at all for late work. I, I just, I guess I'm just Midwest nice when it comes to that. But I, I just don't want students to like rush through and finish a project just because they don't want to lose those points. I want them to take the time they need to really create successful pieces. I'm going to get some grading. I'm going to show you some scary spaces in the art room. And I get to end the day with 22 sixth graders that bring the energy, I'm telling you. There's nothing quite like it. So when you walk through the kiln room, I also have another storage closet here. Yeah, you can barely walk into it because it's a hot mess right now. All right, so this is another check-in. This is six hour of the day, one more hour to go. And we are currently in our my ceramics class. This is ceramics one and ceramics two, all in the same place happening at the same time. Currently, we have a lot of different activities going on. We have some people who are glazing pinch pots, which is what I demonstrated at the beginning of the class. I demonstrated a bubble technique, dripping, splattering, and then taking dried glaze and sprinkling that on. And then today I talked about underglazing. So we, I kind of demonstrated how underglaze is a lot more like acrylic paint. Um, what you see is what you get, and you can kind of create that watered down technique. And then I also showed them how you can take the underglaze and paint it onto newspaper and print it on. In addition, they're working on coil pots and they're working on building those coil pots. And we also have some students that are throwing on the wheel. They're right now throwing bowls. So this is an example of how we organize clay supplies and projects. And then on the front, it shows like what tools are checked out to them at the beginning of the school year. We have them flipped over so they can lay their projects right onto their clay boards. And also the container help um, prevent the pieces from drying out too quickly. All right, so here is a fun little tension getter for your high school students. This is a little um, dance party button and it's a 30 second dance party. And if you press it, the students know they have 30 seconds before they need to pause and start cleaning up. So we will wash our tables with these nice sponges that do a nice job of picking up the clay. Um, once we're done with that, we will dry off the tables with a microfiber towel. So this really helps to prevent a lot of that clay dust from setting. So this is a microfiber mop. I will spritz it with some water. And I prefer this over just sweeping because when we're sweeping, we're just kind of um, taking that clay dust and picking it up and pushing it around the room. So this kind of helps collect it and settle it down. So I have about 22 sixth graders and right now they are working on perspective. Um, they are doing two point linear perspective as well as atmospheric perspective. When we're using watercolor. So I have a whole container here of some fun like finger puppets, um, some little hands. And when I'm demoing, I let my students choose which one I have to throw with and then I have to attempt to throw with that. Um, so I just got some new ones. This is like a whole entire cat. Um, we have some fun dinosaur ones that I haven't tried throwing with. Okay, so we're gonna do cat triceratops and we'll see how it goes. You lost a cat paw! <laughs> cat paw down! Here we go, team. Texturize it with the horns. All right, so here you have it, your very catasaurus, triceratops. 
thrown cup. One of the things I wanted to share with you is a quick way for students to clean up the wheels. So they're gonna just take all of their tools, throw them into their bucket of water here, and then I just take all of the stuff out of the splash guards. And now I'm gonna take my sponge in here and I'm gonna go in and wipe everything down. So you're not gonna have like a deep, perfect, clean wheel, but you're gonna have a functional wheel. And sometimes functional is more important than perfect. A lot faster way to clean off the wheel. All right, it's 5.15. I have bagged up all of our throne pieces, uh, but I'm exhausted. My feet are tired, but my heart is so full with all of the excitement and the joy and the attitude and the positivity that the kids brought today. So this job will wear you out, but my goodness, every day I go to bed and I am just so grateful for having a job that wears me out so much, but fills my heart so much. So make sure that if you haven't yet, you like and subscribe to this because there's a lot more very cool art teachers for you to check out.